Great. Uh, thanks very much for the uh, opportunity to present here. Uh, please come by uh, and have a chat to me either uh, at lunch times or uh, after the conference. Um, but I'll give you a quick overview. It's only 10 minutes. It's about, going to be about Bellevue Gold. Uh, we've had a very, very high grade gold discovery in, in Western Australia. Um, it's the second highest grade gold discovery going on in Australia at the moment after Kirkland Lake. Um, and it's uh, all happened in a rapid rate of knots. We've discovered uh, 1.8 million ounces of gold uh, from surface down to about 500 metres depth uh, in only 18 months time. Um, so a very, very quick, rapid, high grade discovery. Normal disclaimers that you can look at in your own time. So as I said, this, uh, this project uh, uh, is uh, very high grade. Uh, we've got a very large land holding. Um, and one of the things that sets it apart, it's in the Goldfields region. Uh, it hasn't been explored for 20 years. It was held by uh, nickel companies for that 20 years. Uh, Extrata was the last company to own it. So there was no mining companies looking for gold on the property in its day from 1986 through to 1997. It produced 800,000 ounces of gold at 15 grams per tonne. It was actually the highest grade gold mine in Australia for, uh, for a number of years. So super high grade, uh, nobody's looked at it for all this time. Uh, we're the first company to be on the ground and uh, over the last 18 months we've uh, gone from no ounces to 1.8 million ounces at 11 grams per tonne and we're going to see that uh, growing. Uh, we currently have $32 million in cash in the bank and six diamond core drill rigs turning on site. So we expect to see uh, rapid resource growth over the next quarter and quarter after that as we move it uh, towards development and ultimately production. And as you can see from this chart, um, you know, super high grade, as I said, there's only one other uh, ore body that's higher grade than us at the moment in Australia, being, uh, being Kirkland Lakes uh, Swan Zone. Um, and the other really interesting thing to note on this uh, slide is the discovery costs. So we are discovering gold at less than $15 an ounce Australian, and that's been, uh, that includes all the acquisition costs, every uh, cent we've spent as a company and on the ground, and we expect that to continue this uh, low discovery costs for the next uh, uh, year or two as well as we grow the resource. And as you can see, it was uh, only in Christmas 2017 when we drilled our first holes onto the property after spending six months of geological thought on it. Um, and that's where we hit seven metres at 27 grams per tonne gold, pretty much from surface on a brand new load sitting right next to the old gold mine. Um, and from there, you can see we've uh, increased the amount of drill rigs quarter on quarter. And we currently have six diamond core drill rigs turning at the moment. The resource growth has been uh, outstanding and we expect to see that continue at the same rapid rate of knots and we'll be looking for the next resource upgrade to be coming out first quarter next year. And uh, this is a comparison of the top 20 gold producing mines in Australia uh, with the resources that they have um, in the bars and the black dots as being the grade. You can see that we're now on the bottom end of that and you'll see our uh, resource growing and moving towards uh, the right-hand side as that resource increases, and we expect to see that grade continuing to stay the same. So we expect to see a, um, you know, a large um, growth, as I said before, over the next little while. A quick uh, snapshot of the company. Uh, we're now on the ASX 300 indices. Um, it's been a good share price appreciation over the last 18 months, and this is all on the back of uh, resource discoveries and resource growth, and obviously the grade being very, very high. And we, as I said again, we expect that to continue. Um, we have a very strong shareholder base, and this has changed a lot in the last 12 months. It's gone from being a purely retail mum and dad uh, stock to now owned over 50% by global institutions. Um, and you can see the largest ones uh, there that have gone substantial in the last few months, including Van Eck, uh, Regal Funds Management, and 1832 out of North America, and Border Management owned just under 10% of the company, of which we've invested a lot of money ourselves in this company the whole way up as well. We'll do a quick uh, movie to see where we sit and what the ore body looks like and where we're targeting. So we're in Western Australia. Easy to get to. Uh, we fly in and out of uh, Leinster and Mount Keith. Uh, daily flights in and out. Uh, it's a very well-known mining district. We have a very large land holding of 3,500 square kilometres of tenure. You'll know a lot of the mines here. Northern Star with Jundee, uh, Bronzewing, which they've just taken over, only 30 kilometres away from us. We've got Goldfields that owns all the ground to the south of us with the Darlow, um, sorry, Agnew Lawler's project. We've got St Barbara and Saracen 
all within that uh, map as well. So a very well-known gold-producing district. And as you zoom in on the property, uh, we have two granted mining licenses. These are granted, which obviously make it a lot easier for us to get into production, ultimately. Uh, excellent infrastructure, a lot of big mines nearby, so power, water, etc. And as I said, this used to be a producing gold mine. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, mineralisation that sticks out from surface that we've been chasing along. It's within basalts and dolerites, the standard units that host a lot of the gold deposits here in uh, Western Australia. So the historic mine was mined down to 450 metres below surface and it closed in 1997. The red areas are the areas where the 15 grams per tonne was mined out. So you can actually see it was a very small area. And where our resources sit now cover an area of uh, nearly four kilometres of strike to take the resource up to 1.8 million ounces of gold unmined. So this is all new resources and this all sits primarily outside of where the old mine was. So this is new mineralisation. It sticks out from surface and we've only drilled it down to about 500 metres uh, depth and is very much open along strike to the north, uh, to the south. It's open in the foot wall, hanging wall. Uh, and is very much open at depth as well, and these are areas that we're obviously going to be testing with the six drill rigs over the next little while. So you can see the multiple loads that we've got there. So it's gone from being, uh, you know, just a one vein Bellevue uh, load that was high grade to a multi vein uh, Archean load gold system, similar to a lot of the other uh, major gold deposits in the region that are owned by the majors. And we're just going to walk through uh, a few of the drill holes. Um, every drill hole ever drilled on this is shown on this image. Um, the Southern Bell is our um, most further target to the south that's literally had a handful of drill holes into it and this is a major target for us and we expect uh, significant resource growth to come from that. The Viago load is very high grade and you can see numbers there of uh, four and a half metres at 58 grams and seven at, uh, at 50 grams per tonne. And you can see these two areas of Tribune and Viago are very much open as I said north and south and these are real key areas for growth over the next 18 months as we continue to step out. And you can see where this sits next to the old workings as well, the underground workings. And when you look at it in the cross section, the old Bellevue mine, the recent Tribune and Viago discoveries that we've had, and we announced only a, a month or two ago now, the brand new Deacon and Mavis discoveries. And so these have got four and a half metres at 62 grams per tonne and three and a half at 18 grams per tonne. We've now got 15 drill holes into this over a strike length of 1.5 kilometres. So literally one drill hole every 100 metres. Uh, we see this as a major new target, a major new discovery, and we're going to see some uh, significant uh, gold resources coming out on this over the next uh, 6 to 12 months. And one of the amazing things about this ore body, it's a quartz load uh, hosted uh, Archean system, but we're very fortunate in the fact that it's got a, a strong sulphide pyrotite content with it, and the pyrotite uh, lights up as downhole EM conductors. So every hole that we drill, we do downhole EM on it, and you can see these big blue plates here. Uh, these are the EM conductors that sit directly below the mine. So of course these are hugely significant, and these are targets that we are currently drilling, and we have three drill rigs on those as we speak, doing broad step outs, and we expect to see resource growth on those uh, over the next quarter. So this is a big Archean low gold system, as I've said before. Um, it's pretty much only been drilled down to 500 metres vertical depth. All the resource drilling we're doing at the moment it still sits all within that top 500 metres. Um, you know, so big in mineral endowment that will grow in that top 500 metres. But the amazing thing about these uh, gold fields Archean load systems um, in uh, Western Australia is that they go very deep and they go for a very long period of time and these are typically high grade as well. So we see a very big future for us here at Bellevue over the next uh, 18 months or more. And so just coming back up and looking at that where that four kilometres of strike is, and so the amazing thing is we've literally only really drilled within uh, you know a couple of kilometres strike of that four kilometre strike. And as we go to the north, there's been no work done on this for 20 years, and you can see there's a whole bunch of targets that require following up some very high grade rock chips, some old drill holes that are all really, really shallow, you know, literally 10, 20 metres deep that have never been followed up. And as I said, you know, high grade rock chips. So we actually have a team of geologists on the ground. They're going to be working those targets up between now and Christmas. And then first quarter next year, you will see uh, drill rigs on the ground targeting that 20 kilometres of strike potential 
that we have. So it's a very exciting uh, geological area that just has not had work done on it uh, for a very long period of time. Um, and the drilling that we've had has uh, obviously been uh, hugely um, positive in the last little while. So as I said, the mine used to be in operation. It was a very profitable mine from 1986 through to 1997. It was standard CIL uh, processing with a gravity component as well. It um, produced 100,000 ounces a year at nearly 98% recoveries um, and very profitable. Um, now all that is now currently uh, flooded and the, mine is, uh, the mining processing plant is gone. However, of course, it's a small plant, so we expect when we eventually uh, run the studies, it will be a small uh, capital cost to get this up and running. Um, the infrastructure that is there, as I said, is amazing. It's granted mining licenses right next to water and power. Uh, we're currently finishing off our study work to dewater the old workings, the historical workings, and these will get us underground and one step closer towards development and production. And you'll see us uh, as a board making a decision on that before Christmas and, uh, and hopefully looking to start that underground uh, dewatering uh, very, very soon. And as I said, the sulphide content is actually a real positive for us. Uh, the metallurgy is fantastic. We can actually, uh, with the metallurgy, you can see that 3D uh, spin around that we've got there with the drill core. Um, it's small specks of gold that is typically the size of a pin head, and this is evenly distributed throughout the mineralized zone, and you can see the drill core here, and you've got to remember that we drill everything with diamond drill core, um, and everything is sampled on half meter um, samples, and you can see that is very consistent high grade gold throughout every half meter that is sampled. And of course the sulfide, um, the gravity component is brilliant, we get up to 82% recoveries, uh, and no using normal CIL, 98% uh, recoveries uh, on that. And of course the sulfides, as I said, help vector us in to where these high grade gold is using uh, standard downhole electromagnetic testing. So plenty of targets. When we first started on this uh, project, we literally had one target to go and test, and that was to see if there was any more gold left on the property. We now have a whole bunch of uh, loads that are high grade, as I said, open north and south. Um, we've just recently found the Deacon and Mavis loads in the foot wall. We've recently found the new flat load called Vlad in the hanging wall, um, and these are all very much open, and of course we'll be testing those big downhole EM conductors uh, that are the, the largest conductors we've got on the project sitting directly below the old workings. So as I said, uh, a lot more to go on this project. It's very, very early days for us. It's quite amazing that no one has actually looked at this project for 20 years because it's been sat there held by Extrata and, and other nickel companies. And so we're very, very fortunate to be the, uh, the first gold company on this property because I'm sure that if it was owned by uh, a mining company 20 years ago, I wouldn't be standing here now because uh, this uh, mine would be, uh, would be much, much deeper and probably still in production. So exciting uh, 12 to 18 months ahead for us and plenty of cash to do that, plenty of drill rigs turning on site and there's going to be lots of news flow over the next little while. So thanks very much for your time.